Hi, I'm Jenny Venno, faculty librarian at Renton Technical College, and this video is on vaccines and misinformation. First, here are some key things to know about COVID-19 vaccines shared from the Between Us About Us website at greaterthancovid.org. COVID-19 vaccines are safe and effective. Side effects are normal signs your body is building protection and usually go away in a few days. They are available to every person 12 years and older. They are free of charge whether you have health insurance or not, and they are available regardless of immigration status. As noted in this PBS NewsHour article, on July 15, 2021, the U.S. Surgeon General Vivek Murthy called for a national effort to fight misinformation about COVID-19 and vaccines because such misinformation is undermining efforts to end the coronavirus pandemic. As a librarian and faculty member at Renton Technical College, it's my job to join the efforts to prevent the spread of misinformation. In this video, I'm going to talk about some common misconceptions about the COVID-19 vaccine and share some websites that help with thinking critically about information. The three themes of misinformation I'll be focusing on today are that vaccines are not safe, they are ineffective at stopping COVID, and they are part of a government control program. The first theme is about the safety of vaccines. Two claims against the safety of vaccines are about infertility and side effects. In this blog from Dear Pandemic, the author states that COVID-19 vaccines are safe and effective while pregnant and have no negative impact on fertility. Additionally, data from the Pfizer vaccine trials, the CDC, and other studies have found no increased risk of pregnancy complications or adverse birth outcomes among people who were vaccinated during pregnancy. This article from The Conversation addresses side effects of the COVID-19 vaccine. While reports of rare illnesses happening from vaccines can be scary, they're a sign that the vaccine safety reporting system is working. They also highlight how the relative risks of rare side effects like these need to be put into context. And the context here is that the benefits of vaccination far outweigh the risks of rare adverse events from receiving a COVID-19 vaccination. The second theme is that vaccines are an ineffective strategy in preventing severe illness. This article from Lead Stories provides evidence from multiple sources that doctors on TV encourage people to boost their immune system with vitamins, sunlight, good food, and vaccines. Furthermore, this quote from an AP News article says nearly all COVID-19 deaths in the U.S. now are in people who weren't vaccinated a staggering demonstration of how effective the shots have been and an indication that deaths per day could be practically zero if everyone eligible got the vaccine. The third and final theme is that vaccines are part of a government control program. Several stories circulated the internet earlier this year about people receiving microchips and magnets from vaccines. COVID-19 vaccines contain neither of these things. This article from Lead Stories looks at a video shared on social media and examines if microchips could be in COVID-19 vaccines. A quote from the article states, the 20 second long video describes no methodology and does not offer convincing proof of anything. And this article from PolitiFact reviews testimony to Ohio lawmakers and provides evidence that COVID-19 vaccines do not contain microchips or metallic ingredients that could cause a magnet to stick to a recipient's body. Pointer, Dear Pandemic, Fact Check, Politifact, AP News, Lead Stories, Snopes, and PBS NewsHour are all resources used to research this video. These sources are considered trusted sources for evaluating information. There are several reasons that these sources are trusted, but the main one is that they provide links to the scientific evidence that proves the claims being examined are untrue. If you want more information from a trusted source about vaccines and COVID-19 in general, please consider taking a look at them. If you'd like to improve your own evaluation skills for thinking critically about the claims made on social media, in the news, in TV ads, or in magazine or newspaper articles, please watch the next video in the RTC Library's Fake News Playlist on YouTube. Librarian Dae Zhang goes into detail about how to evaluate information using the SIFT method and demonstrates how to stop, investigate, find, and trace information. The librarians at RTC have also put together a libguide about COVID-19 vaccine information. Information about common myths, evaluating information, and links to fact-checking websites is available. As is information about the vaccine itself, how to get vaccinated in King County, and COVID-19 vaccine fact sheets in multiple languages. 
In the upcoming weeks, we'll be talking a lot about the COVID-19 vaccine and vaccinations on campus. Those conversations can become heated very quickly, so I'd like to leave you with this short guide to speaking up without having a showdown from the News Literacy Project. This PDF shares six best practices for talking to friends and family. Stay safe, RTC community, and I hope to see you on campus soon.